Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to Esther's Song of Praise. I hope that all of you are having an amazing day. It is Friday evening, and I am I am tired, but I'm happy because today was a very long but productive day. Have you ever felt like that? And just looking forward to the weekend. I know for a lot of people, it's time for rest and relaxation. Tomorrow, I already have appointments lined up, um, but Sunday, the Lord's Day, you know, he gave us that model where he worked and created for six days, and then on the seventh day, he rested. And so definitely, I'm going to follow in the footsteps of my Heavenly Father, and on the seventh day, I will rest. So um, today's number five for me in my work day, as with many um, these are the days where, even though I don't miss working in corporate America and in academia, the five-day business model, um, you know, this would be the start of my, like, long weekend, you know, if I was still working at a college or university. Um, we actually took, in, what, in one school we worked at, um, just a side note, we actually took off early. So some days I would leave at like 12 or one, I think it was one o'clock. Actually, we left at one o'clock. And um, that was a very, uh, I like that work schedule <laughs> a lot. Um, but, you know, essentially working for someone else, you know, I want to give my time and my labor to fulfill the potential and the gifts and abilities that the Lord has given me. So all throughout the day, even though um, it was very long and I was working pretty much all day, I still had time to, um, you know, take notes, jot down things, write, um, because I definitely want to finish the books that are, you know, brewing in my heart and fulfill, you know, uh, my hobbies as well to become an author. My goal is to become a best-selling, a New York best-selling author one day in the near future. Um, but that's a, a work-life balance that I'm still trying to master. So speaking of books, let's continue on with the book of Psalms, chapter 119, the longest chapter in the entire Bible. So today we're going to go through verses 41 through 80. I'm going to ask the Lord to bless his word and then we'll get right into it. Lord God, we thank you so much. What a difference a day makes. We thank you, Lord God, for another day here on earth. We ask that you will bless your word today, Lord God. That you will bless my brothers and sisters out there, Father in the world. We thank you and we just glorify your name, Lord. Continuously do a work in each one of us, Father God. Help us to use our gifts and our talents, our voices, to lift up and praise your holy name, Lord. We ask that you would give us wisdom from verses 41 through 80 in the chapter that we're going to read today. Psalm 119, Father, we just ask that you will be glorified. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 41 through 80. May your unfailing love come to me, Lord your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings and will not be put to shame. For I delight in your commands, because I love them. I reach out for your commands, which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise pres pres preserves my life. I'm sorry, you guys. Forgive me. I'm so tired. <laughs> It's 11.39 p.m., just a side note, but I will press on. Your promise preserves my life. The arrogant mock me unmercifully. 
but I do not turn from your law. I remember, Lord, your ancient laws, and I find comfort in them. Indignation grips me because of the wicked. You have forsaken your law. Who has forsaken your law? Your decrees are the image of my song, wherever I lodge. In the night, Lord, I remember your name, that I may keep your law. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. You are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. The earth is filled with your love, Lord. Teach me your decrees. Do good to your servant according to your word, Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I may learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me. For I have put hope in your word. I know, Lord, that your laws are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. May your unfailing love be my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is is my delight. May the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause, but I will meditate on your precepts. May those who fear you turn to me, those who understand your statutes. May I wholeheartedly follow your decrees, that I may not be put to shame. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. So one of my favorite verses, and a verse that definitely stood out to me, was verse 71, where King David says, you know, or let's go back to verse 70. Um... And even verse 69 says, though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. 71 stood out for me because, um, you know, (laughs) That this is King David writing this, but during the time where you know he is at one of the lowest points in his life, and even though he's literally trying to save his life, he can look around and say, You know what? It's good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. He recognizes, you know. Similarly to um, to Paul, when he was crying out to the, to the Lord for deliverance from the thorn in his flesh, and the Lord said, you know, my grace is sufficient for thee, meaning that we can learn from the times of suffering in our lives. The afflictions that we come are not always outside of the will of God. If you guys remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was really going through it before before Calvary, he was still in the will of God. There was never a time where Jesus was out of the will of God. Even when he, he was, you know, turning over um, the tables and calling out the Pharisees for setting up a marketplace within the, the house of God, you know, he said, this is my father's house. Um, you won't desecrate it. 
all those times, he was always in the will of God. And so here, you know, David is saying, it's good for me to be afflicted. It's good for, you know, um, me to go through these things so that I may learn your decrees. You know, we know in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. For them that love God and are called according to his purpose, the good, the bad, everything that we go through, brothers and sisters, and some things, many things, um, are are needless suffering, the, their direct consequences of the decisions that we make. But the Lord are, is still able to use those things to mold us and shape us. He's able to use the afflictions in our lives to make us more like him. So that's the verse that stood out to me. Um, but I wanna hear from you guys. What are your favorite verses? from this chapter, let me know in the comments section below. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already, and I will talk with you in the next video. Take care and be blessed, brothers and sisters. Goodbye.